Hello there, Ray here, and in today's video, we will be looking at 12 new farms for 1.17 that let you farm up old items in new efficient ways. This video is my second part of me designing a farm for every new 1.17 feature. So if you haven't seen the first video, make sure you guys check that out, as that's where I show how you can automatically farm all the new items we see in 1.17. On this video, we're going to focus more on smaller changes in 1.17 that have a huge impact on how we can farm up old items. And because the last video was so long, I also included some similar farming methods for blocks such as collecting ores. And all this machine designing was done over the last 8 months, and I designed these machines live on my Twitch stream, and a live stream every Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday at 2pm Eastern Time where you can check out the archives to see exactly how these were designed from scratch. So I really appreciate if you would like as well as share this video with other Minecrafters. Just let them know that Raiseworks has new 1.17 farms for all the new items, as well as past ones, as that is by far the best way to show support. And this is actually just a small part of a bigger goal that I have to try to farm up all the items in the game of Minecraft. And we are over 90% of the way there. And you can check out this document down in the description where you can find a video showing how to farm almost every item. We have a lot of cool stuff to look at today, so let's get started. The first one we're going to take a look at is the Shulker Shell Farm. I made several designs over the last 8 months, and I think I have a total of 10 of them. Some have portals, some have no portals, some use water, some use skulk sensors, some have refilling systems. But the one I'm going to show you today is the simplest and one that can kind of be placed anywhere in your world. I'll go into more detail about this one as well as other ones in a future video. The thing to know about the shulker shell farm is you're able to split one shulker into multiple shulkers and the extra split is taken down and killed and there is a 50% chance that it will drop a shell. And this way you can get unlimited amounts of shulker shells which are used to make the shulker boxes. This new feature in 1.17 makes shulker shells a renewable resource. So this farm is definitely a must for anybody who has a lot of items that they want to store. With this design here, I made it so that you can build it pretty much anywhere. So you can build it in your spawn chunks and run 24 seven. You can build it at your base and you can even build it right at the end city in the end dimension. So you never have to move the shulkers into the overworld. This farm by far took the most time to design, but it was well worth it as I got it to be extremely simple for how complex the requirements are. Now with this farm, all you need to know is that you should build it all in one chunk and you can do this by pressing F3 plus G and this box will show up where you can see what one chunk looks like. And you just put it in exactly like you see it here in this world. This farm doesn't need any players to actually load it. So you can put it inside of your spawn chunks and long as somebody's in the overworld, it will be loaded. And long as it's loaded, it's going to constantly be producing shulker shells. It just consists of a shulker here and a shulker in the center with a snow golem. And there's really not that much redstone to it. There's actually no clock on this entire thing. It's all based off of entities. So while this is an entity processing chunks, it will be running. And if it's not entity processing chunks, then it will just stop. But I would recommend turning it off if you're not going to have it loaded. And if you want to, you can use my nether chunk loader to keep this thing loaded all the time, even without it being a set of spawn chunks. And if you're wondering how my nether portal chunk loaders work, I'll put some links down in the description. Besides the redstone, the build itself is pretty much the same thing all the way to the bottom. And down here, we just have a small rail system. And that's all there really is to the entire build. This design is meant to be simple and easy to build for survival, yet it produces 32 shells per hour. And I will be doing a video showing how you guys can build this up in your world and the other things you need to know about it. Make sure you guys are subscribed and have that bell notification turned on. And I specifically designed this farm so that it would have extremely low rates of failure. So if you ran this for 2 years, 24 7, it would only fail one time. And it ran for 500 hours straight and it had no problems. Next, we're going to take a look at the AFK Lava Farm. Another new feature of 1.17 is that you can get infinite amounts of lava. This is done by having a source above a dripstone. And then underneath of that, we have a cauldron, which is collecting the drips. It will eventually fill it up. And then using an empty bucket on it, you will get a lava bucket. And this process will continue over and over again. So now lava is a renewable resource. So this farm works just like my Potter Snow Farm, where you have tons of cauldrons and you have the player moving with a minecart and having empty buckets in the hand to pick up all of the stuff inside of the cauldrons. So you hop in your minecart and you just push forward to get it started and then you'll just aim up near the feet of the cauldrons and then you hold down right click. And then your player will automatically scoop up any lava that's in the cauldrons. Then the buckets are just falling out of the inventory because there's no room and they're ending up in a water stream. All the while the player is given more empty buckets at each end of the row to refill their supply. And at the very end the player makes the entire loop all over again. 
all the lava buckets are being collected by this water stream and are being collected and put into chest. It does take a lot of buckets, so make sure you have an iron farm nearby. Now the cauldrons only fill up with lava because of random ticks, which only occur in a eight chunk radius around the player. So build it somewhere where there's players nearby. Unlike the powder snow farm, which needs to have sky access, therefore you only can expand it horizontally. This farm doesn't, so you can actually stack multiple layers of this as well as build it in an eight by eight chunk. The farm is also tileable, so you can build this however big or small you want. Next up, we're gonna be looking at a AFK stray farm. The new feature with stray farms is that you can actually convert skeletons into strays by putting them through some powder snow. So we have a skeleton spawner that's dropping skeletons into this powder snow. They're touching it for a certain amount of time, enough time so that they will start to shake just like zombies being converted into drowns. Then after a short period of time, they will actually turn into strays. Now the unique thing about strays compared to skeletons is that not only do they drop arrows as well as bones and also have a chance of dropping armor including diamond armor but since they are stray they also will drop slowness arrows if killed by player means and we can actually do that automatically with my farm and this is done by using a tame dog so you don't even have to be standing down here to kill them all you have to do is be within 16 blocks of the spawner and it'll constantly be producing all the skeleton loot or you can come down here and just afk right here and also get the xps off of it a really cool farm that provides a lot of unique items. And with recent changes that have been made to the way that glow squid as well as axolotls spawn, we no longer have to worry about them spawning directly inside of the bubble columns anymore. The rates of this farm are determined by the mob spawner, which only produces around 500 mobs per hour. And with this special setup down here, you don't have to worry about the dog ever being shot back by the skeletons that it attacks. Next up is a new type of squid farm using axolotls. So in the last video we looked at glow squid farm. Now we're going to take a look at a normal squid farm and also a fish drop farm. So this here is a ink farm that produces squids. It's also extremely simple, probably only taking 5-10 minutes to build this entire thing. The new predator mob in 1.17, the axolotls, will attack things like squid, which makes this new farm possible. And they will kill them directly in their spawning location so you don't have to have anything fancy making this farm quite quick to build up. Harsing is getting axolotls and putting them in here. But with this farm here you'll get tons of axolotls to spawn in. And once you scoop them up in a bucket and then you place them again they will no longer count to the mob cap so you don't even have to name take them. And these guys will attack squids that spawn in here. And all the items will be flushed over into this water stream and then put down into this chest right here. The rates of this farm are not as good as it used to be, but they're still very good for such a simple setup. Producing over 1,500 ink sacks per hour. There's even a chance of getting some glow squid. Because of the AFK spot, which is directly above the farm, it's technically a block above the ground, so that means you can get glow squids. But you can stop them from spawning by changing out the floor if you want to. Keep in mind that this farm has to be either built in a river biome or an ocean. I recommend a river and has to be built below the sea level, which is right here. This farm over here is a fish farm and fishes will actually spawn above the ocean and that's where I recommend to build this one. This one also uses axolotls to kill them and you'll get a wide variety of fish drops depending on which ocean type you build it in. And they also drop bone mill. But due to the changes that they made with axolotls, they aren't as aggressive towards fish anymore. So I would recommend actually building my old fish drop farm. With another new feature, we're able to actually make super fast AFK vine farms. This is due to the change that they made with breaking vines. And this is because they came out with glow lichen, which acts very similar. And they made it so if glow lichen can break faster if you're using efficiency 5 on your shears. Also haste helps. And with this change, it's now possible to instant mine vines as well. So I went ahead and designed a new farm using this change. This is a super fast vine farm. And it's relatively simple to understand, just a single water washing across it and vines hanging down from the ceiling. And there's actually no redstone in this entire thing. And vines are used to craft mossy cobble blocks as well as mossy stone bricks. And it takes one vine per block, so if you're doing a build, it can take a lot of vines. And that's exactly what this farm is designed for, producing a lot of items very quickly. For this farm, you will need to have a Unbreaking 3, Efficiency 5, as well as Mending on your shears. And you need to have a Haste 2 beacon so you can get instant mine while you're inside of a minecart. To run this farm, you will be in the minecart and you're going to kind of aim a little bit diagonal and then just push forward and hold down your left button. And as soon as you get into the farm, you're going to be removing 4.5 vines per a single block. 
all while being at the speed of a minecart on a rail, producing over 860 vines in just 50 seconds. And the farm is tileable so you can expand it in all six directions. Next up is an infinitely automatic dirt farm. This crazy contraption that I made is the first infinitely automatic dirt farm. With a new mechanic in 1.17, moss blocks that get bone milled convert nearby stone types into moss blocks. And when they get bone milled, they also have a chance of planting vegetation on top of them, including an azalea sapling. When these saplings grow up using bone mill, they will convert the block below them into rooted dirt. If the player then uses a hoe on the rooted dirt, it will convert it into normal dirt. And that's exactly what this farm does here. But it does all the parts infinitely automatic, meaning that once the player has started it up, it can continue on forever without needing any changes. So you run this farm just by putting azalea in your offhand, having a hoe in your main hand, hopping this minecart, then aiming over here and holding down right click. And that's all there is to it. Everything else about the farm is done automatically. And not only that, it is infinitely automatic with unlimited source of explosions. We also got unlimited XP's to repair the hoe and unlimited bone mill from my moss block farm to grow up the trees. So not only does it produce a lot of dirt, it also produces sticks, both types of azalea, moss blocks, seeds, oak logs, moss carpets, hanging root, plus all of the loot that you get off of the pigment, which adds up over time. And on top of that, there's also a couple gen over here as just a little extra. Having tons of dirt is very useful when doing large terraforming builds and handy for filling in those creeper holes. And with this farm, it's so much nicer than having to craft coarse dirt. With the new potter snow, I was able to design a new polar bear farm. This farm is similar to some of my other passive mob farms where the mobs spawn on grass and then we release some water which washes them off of it into a killing chamber. What's new with 1.17 is the powder snow and with it only some mobs can actually spawn inside of it including the polar bear. So with a setup like this built inside of a tundra you will only get polar bears to spawn. Then the entire machine will be on a clock where it will flush the platforms and the polar bears get washed over here into the lava. Another new feature of 1.17 is that when polar bear dies while it is on fire it will not just produce normal fish but instead it will be a cooked type of fish. So we got cooked salmon and we got cooked cod. This farm isn't probably going to be used by many players mostly because fish isn't that useful. Now in 17 besides polar bears being able to drop cooked variations of fish when guardians catch fire they also will drop cooked fish types when they die. The raw fish is actually more useful for trading where cooked fish is just a low level food source. Now this burning of mobs producing cooked variations has also been applied to zombies where they will drop cooked potatoes if they die while they're on fire. But once again not very useful. I will be going into more detail about this passive mob farm in the future. Next up is a grass block and mycelium farm and this one is over in the end dimension. This farm is just like my dirt farm except the difference is that after the moss block is converted into a bit of dirt and then into a dirt block, the dirt block is then pushed over beside some grass blocks where they spread and convert the nearby dirt into grass blocks. And we have a spawning platform over here which produces endermen and the endermen are going to fall down beside the grass and pick up the blocks and hold them in their hand. Then they're going to fall all the way down where they will hit the ground and die dropping their grass blocks. And this way we can get the blocks as items and they are stored away in the chest. You can also put mycelium blocks up at the top which will convert the dirt into mycelium. Grass blocks are useful in terraforming projects or when designing large passive mob farms. This farm produces over 400 trees per hour, producing 400 grass blocks per hour. And you run the farm just like the other one, where you AFK inside the minecart and aim and just hold down right click. This next farm is in the nether dimension. And this is my magma cream farm using powder snow. There are magma cream spawners in bastions in the nether dimension and they will produce all the different sizes of these guys. Powder snow will actually do extra damage to magma cubes because they're kind of like a warm nether mob. So actually will kill them quite fast and when they die they have a chance of dropping the magma cream which then gets picked up by the topper minecart underneath making the farm extremely simple and will produce 250 magma cream per hour. The powder snow is currently a little bit difficult to get but once 1.18 comes out you should be able to find this naturally on top of mountains. Magma cream has a lot of uses like making magma blocks as well as potions. Another farm that's in the nether dimension is my basalt farm. 
But in 1.17, there is a new type of basalt, and that is smooth basalt, which has a unique texture. So if we turn on the crazy fast basalt farm, you will see that it will be generating it and then also blowing it up with TNT, collecting it with the sweeping machine and bring it over here to the storage. This is actually where it gets put into chest. But at this moment, it is still basalt. The way you get smooth basalt is by smelting it. We have a smelter array right here inside of the farm which is being fueled by this chest minecart, and the fuel is coming from this chest here. You can use whatever fuel type that you want, and if you really want to, you can even use carpet dupers, which will produce unlimited amounts of carpets, which can be used as a fuel source. Once the basalt is cooked down, it will turn into the new 1.70 item, which is smooth basalt. And with this crazy farm here, you'll get 144,000 smooth basalt per hour. Perfect for whatever crazy builds you have going on. Next, we're going to take a look at a way to farm up candles. Now, candles are a new item for 1.17, and they look amazing and can be used for a wide range of aesthetics. And they come in 16 colors, which can be lit for even more uses. Now, the candle itself can't be farmed up, but the two items which are needed to craft it can be. That is the honeycomb and string, which are both items from the past, and you can get the first one by using my honey farm. This is actually one that also has a villager that will automatically be harvesting the crops. So not only do you get honeycomb from the farm, but you can also get honey bottles. You can also get all the different types of crops that villagers can harvest. And the villager will automatically use a composter to get more bone meal. On top of the bees will also use their pollen to help grow up the crops faster. It's a very cool all-in-one farm that's quite simple. And the way that you get the string is by using my AFK piglin bartering farm. The farm is pretty simple and you will get a lot of string from it plus a bunch of other very useful items. So with the honeycomb and with the string you can go ahead and craft your candles and then use dyes to get all the colors. If you don't want to have a villager in the bee farm you can just use my simple honey farm which you can choose to get honey or you can choose to get honeycomb out of. The last farm is the coolest one by far. This is how you're going to get deep slate as well as the deep slate ores, tough block, and calcite. And this is done by using a tunnel bore. This design here is by Comet and I will have it linked in the description if you want to learn more about it. It's great for blowing away a lot of stone down here at the perfect location for mining, which is between Y level 10 and 16. Because at this location, you are just above any lava lakes, but you're within range of getting all the different ores in the game. And in 1.17, this includes the new variations of ores, which are deep slate. And these will only generate if there is ore that tries to spawn in right where there is a blob of deep slate. And deep slate is a new stone type that can be found at the lowest parts of the world and is used to get the majority of the new blocks in 1.17, including slabs and stairs, and even a whole bunch of new walls. But deep slate isn't as common as normal stone, and the deep slate variations of the ore are more rare. This includes deep slate coal, iron, copper, gold, redstone, lapis, diamonds, and by far the rarest deep slate emerald ore. And this stuff is so rare because not only do you have to, because not only does the ore have to spawn in one of these deep slate blobs, but it also has to be inside of a mountain biome so that emerald ore can generate in. And I took a real section of a 1.17 world, cut it out and put it into this world here. And you can see all the different ores showing up and the ore heights are exactly the same as like 1.16. The only difference is that we have copper ore, which generates the same as iron ore. But at the bottom of the world, you can see how the deep slate is in these little blobs down here. And if any of the ore happens to generate inside of it, we get these really unique looking blocks. And I went ahead and run the tunnel bore partly into here. And I actually ran across two deep slate emerald ore. One there as well as one right here. Making them quite precious just because of their rarity. And they are quite a bit more rare than ancient debris. And to acquire them as ore form, you do need to use a silk touch pickaxe. And silk touch is also needed to get the deep slate in the original form. If you use a normal pickaxe, it's going to drop a cobbled deep slate. But you can also have this automatically mined up by using your tunnel bore machine, which will shoot TNT outwards and blow up the blocks into item form, which you can easily come by and pick up. So you can get tons of deep slate without having to actually mine it, as it is harder than stone. And while you're down here, you might run across these new blocks, which are called tough blocks, that also generate in blobs. 
and you also might run across the new geodes. And these things have a few different blocks inside them, including the smooth basalt and this new block, which you can only find around the outside of them, which is calcite. And there's the amethyst inside. So if you dig into one of these, you'll also get these new blocks. And if you don't mine up some of the ores like copper ore, iron ore, or gold ore, when they blow up from the TNT, or if you use a normal pickaxe on them, they will drop the raw item form, which are also new items with 1.17. They each have their unique look and they can be smelted down into the normal ingots. They can also be crafted into these raw blocks, one for iron, copper, and gold. And getting all these new blocks is fun by using this machine. Just flick that gate there and wait for it to blow up the blocks into items. And then just go around and pick up all the items. Or silk touch the ores. It really lets you see a lot of different types at the bottom of the world without having to slowly branch mine at these low levels. If you happen to come across any liquids, make sure to remove them before starting the machine back up again. Even without the new caves in 1.17, just the new variations of blocks brings a lot of life to mining. So if you've seen the last video as well as this one, you've just seen a farm for every single new item in 1.17. The only item I didn't go over was small drip leaf, which you only can get from wandering trader trades. And there are some items which are in 1.17 but not in survival, including the bundle, the skulk sensor, and the spore blossom. If you'd like to learn about these builds in more detail, check out the original videos I have linked below. And if you'd like to see exactly how to build up any of these designs, check out this world download. Designing these farms was challenging but extremely rewarding and I want to thank everybody who joined my streams and showed support which allows me to do these insane things. I would like to thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!